Hello, Frameline 47. Thank you for joining us at this screening of Bottoms. Um, I'm coming to you live from the past and I already know that you all loved it. I already know that all of you are gonna go out and see Bottoms again because you missed half the jokes because you were laughing so hard and loud. Um, and uh, quickly, a note to myself from the, the past, the outfit you chose tonight is perfect and your hair looks spectacular. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I'm here with the director uh, and co-writer of Bottoms, Emma Seligman, and the co-writer and one of the stars, Rachel Sinnott, who stars as PJ. Uh, they couldn't be here with us in person because, well, life and all of that, but they're here with me now for a chat. Uh, welcome, Emma and Rachel. Thank you for hey. having us. Hi, thank you for having us. Thank you uh, so much for making time for us. I guarantee that right now the Frameline audience uh, knows no chill and the Castro is still rowdy and loud. So uh, congratulations on a great film. Um, so thank first you. I just wanted to, uh, yeah, thank you, you're welcome. I wanted to talk to you about the title, Bottoms. Uh, as a programmer, as a programming director of a queer film festival. Um, I have loved the mental gymnastics that people go through when I say, oh, you've got to go see Bottoms. And then I start to tell them what it's about. And it's like, ah, ah, ah it's not at all what you think. It's not what you thought. <laughs> uh, so I was just wondering, you know, where it came from, how you just tell me everything. Um, I, I feel like I, so often like I don't know the title uh, and I feel like Rachel's the same way of like the projects that we're doing until like very late on into writing it um and so we were just calling this gay high school like untitled gay high school movie for a while and then um I think we both love a good devil on ton whatever I never know how to pronounce it but um we love a double meaning in a title um which uh I, I try to do in my first movie um and so we just had a long list and there was a lot of options. It was like bottoms up, bottoms down. Yeah. I think at one point we did consider calling it untitled guy high school movie. Um, we and then we lot, just had a lot of names and some were so long too. Like there was a versions of the title that was like gay high school movie, kids, college, high school. Like <laughs> it was like way too long. And then we were like, this is perfect. Like once we landed on it, I feel like also we were like, it wouldn't be anything else, but you have to like go through those first. Yeah. So they're losers. If anyone doesn't know the meaning, they're losers. And then also I mean, they're gay. That's, that's <laughs> what I explain at the airport when the, the customs people are like, you work in this country. Cause I'm Canadian. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, what movies have you made? And then I'm like, Oh, this movie bottoms. And they're like, like pants. And I'm like, no. And then I have to like explain why it's called bottoms. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, like pants. Oh, come in, come yeah, in. It's like pants. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, well, I guess kind of building on that, this film has also like helped me identify my uh, new favorite word combination in the English language: uh, lesbian fight club. Um, <laughs> I wonder if you could tell me a little bit about kind of the genesis of the fight club and where where that came from. Is this like uh, is this from personal experience? That'd be so cool if it was, but no. And then I started a fight club at NYU. Can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be so fun. Um, I do feel like Rachel learned how to fight really well in the stunts, um, or, or to, to pretend to, to, to look fight. like you were, yeah, uh, not pretend, but to pretend to be punched in the face, the reaction. Um, uh, I believe you can take a punch. Thank you. It took a lot of training. It was like, you knew it was crazy when I finally fi filmed my sequence and like Aya was about to like cry because she was so like, you've come so far. Because <laughs> in camp, I was struggling. I was really struggling. But yeah, it was a bonding experience for us all to kind of go through that together. Yeah. In, ter in terms of where it came from, sorry, actually answering your question. Um, uh, that, that was me. I took us on a digression. Um, I think that like I, when we first came together, like we just wanted the girls to be like, super, like heroes in some way. Like whether that be like, there was one point where I was like, should they literally be superheroes and have like magical powers or something? And so we just knew we wanted them to like fight to save the day because on top of like wanting to just do like a, a, a queer teen, like sex comedy, like, like in a raunchy style, we also knew that we wanted them to be seen in this sort of like, 
not like traditional girl power, but in a, in a way where, you know, these girls are on an adventure kind of to like, to, to, to save the day and be heroes. So then we just tossed around different like ideas of what that would, um, what that could mean. And then there was just a giant whiteboard um, when we were first brainstorming filled with lots of fighting kind of terminology and words, um, you know, yeah. So, so that's where it came from. I don't know, Rach, if you have other memories of No, where I think it went. we were just basically saying everything we wanted in a movie like this. And I think a lot came pouring out of like stuff that we hadn't gotten to see in like queer stories, female stories. And so like we were like we're blowing up a car. They she were punching each other in the face, like all of this stuff. Yeah. Where it was like in the beginning, when it was on the whiteboard, it didn't even make sense. It was like period club, then they're beating each other up. And then it's this, and then it, it gradually found its way in. But I think it was like, we wanted to be able to see ourselves like as doing those things um, and kind of, and get, get our characters to be able to, or be allowed to do stuff like that. Um, okay, that kind of builds on this. So while I was programming uh, Frame Line 47, uh, I saw this theme in a lot of films kind of emerge this year, and especially even uh, Shiva Baby a couple of years ago, that was, I think it was Frame Line 44. Mm -hmm. um, but in for sure in Bottoms, uh, in the programming room, we called it, uh, we called it our Queers Behaving Badly thread. Um, and so I was just wondering if y'all had any thoughts about the rise of the, the kind of queer anti-hero at this moment and like what draws you to these sort of hilariously messy, human, absurd queer stories. I think that we just want to see ourselves on screen. And I think that like, um, we've still barely gotten ahead with seeing messy women in general, like on like, like flawed, fucked up, you know, horny, normal, like young women. And, and I feel the same way about queer people. Um, and I think we're drawn to it because it's like, just like normal, because we can see ourselves in those characters. Um, so I, that's, that's, that's where the queer anti-hero comes from me. I think that like we've had, I think that I'm not tired of, but there's just been so much content where queer people are like these either like victims of, of, of you know, traumatic experiences or they're these angelic beings, like especially when they're teenagers. I think that so often the stuff that we get in YA movies, you know, portrays queer teens as like very innocent and sweet and, and don't have a sexual thought in their body. You know what I mean? Or if they do, it's, 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 it's in a very sort of hopeful and sweet way. And, and so I think our version of the, the queer anti-hero in this was just like extremely horny um, and normal in, in that teenage way. I think we also just wanted it to be like funny and like, little perverts rude little perverts <laughs> are funny like do you know what I mean like I'm that I think we just wanted to like we would just want people to have a good time watching the movie and to laugh and have fun and like I think that sometimes people write like queer characters or female characters like it's almost like they don't allow them that opportunity to be little shits or whatever but it's like to me that's the stuff that I um like to watch and yeah I think just to have fun and be funny I love it I love it I love it I love that y'all are out here championing the the weird little perverts because I mean <laughs> honestly everybody has a little little bit of a weird little pervert in them I mean right human uh, you yeah human it's a totally human thing um i'd love to know more about the your, your partnership and how you all how you both work together i mean like i said you seem to be able to pull off like some of the most and get away with too like wh how did you like how did you get away with this movie i like how did it it's just so amazing but you pull out these improbable outlandish things with so much charm and, and grace i would just love to know how y'all work with one another well, I would say one, I want to say writing this movie with Emma was like life saving for me. I remember we started writing it in like this very 
I'll speak for myself, bleak time. And um, I just remember, and like, there was no, we were not at all at a place in our career where everyone was like, send us the script. Like we're dying to read it. Like it was like, we were writing it basically for ourselves in that, like there was no ever promise of it being made, but we were like, we're going to make this and having that together, like, and making each other laugh and like building on this thing brought me so much joy. And I'm like, so grateful to Emma to have like a partner like that. And um, I think like the whole, that's how I felt about writing. And then I felt like the making of the movie was beautiful in a different way where I felt like we were on an adventure together that was terrifying at some moments, but I would not want to be on it with anybody else. Like I felt like we were going in there being like, whoa, we just, this is a lot more money on the line. And all of a sudden we're blowing up a car and we have, we're getting rained out. And like, that was scary at a lot of moments. And like, I think Emma and I also kind of felt like, are we going to pull this off? Like, or not, but like, kind of like what you were saying of like, we can't believe they're letting us do this. Like this is kind of crazy. But I think that like having each other made it is what is, I couldn't have done it with like doing it together is what we were like, we started this so long ago, we're finishing it. And yeah. So anyways, I just feel very lucky to have a partner like that, like Emma. Likewise. Um, <laughs> I feel, I feel the same sort of like on an emotional um, and like just to sort of a level of support, like I agree with Rachel. And then in terms of like on a creative level, it uh, it's so wonderful. You know, we, we're very different in terms of our our what our crafts and and where we come from. Rachel's a joke machine. I mean, my, some people may not know, but I, I feel like a lot of people know she's a very talented, hilarious stand up comedian. Um, and she's it, it's so I love writing alone as well but writing alone can be so tough because I feel like everyone's a masochist and you're just like no one's gonna want to read this as you're typing it you're like this is horrible but you just like have to get through it and when you're writing with someone like Rachel she's like okay not funny try again like you know and like just keeps going with the jokes um and it was wonderful to sort of have a writing process with her through her lens that was very freeing um and and allowed us to take turns and and it didn't always necessarily need to make sense especially in the early writing days like we could just have fun um and but eventually and it does need special. to make sense which is eventually. what I'm talking <laughs> well there the the movie that at least a loose plot sense. yeah, yeah. I, just just a narrative in general just names just, of just characters, characters you know just sort of the same characters throughout yeah um, but it's, it's, it's great. It, you know, I, I highly recommend uh, writing with, with uh, a best friend. <laughs> um, okay. So that kind of sparks two questions for me. Um, the first is, it was it through stand up that you all connected with IO or improv uh, or how? Yeah. I was going to say, I, I did, it was like comedy. We did like a sketch together and then we sort of like were doing the open mic scene together. And then we started hosting, like we would sometimes host a show together. I'm like, I flash, but there were so many moments on set where Emma, do you remember when you came to that like horrible show that I went, and I hosted in like a library? It was in a comic book store. It was in a comic book yeah. store. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of a lot. That was my that was my birthday. Or like it happened to be remember? Yes. And I was like, I'm so yeah. sorry. That this <laughs> That's a best friend. Like, but to go from there to doing a movie together was so special and be like, okay, we're using those same skills we were using in the comic book store, but like on such a bigger level. So it was cool. Sorry, I'm expanding on your question. But like I think it was Please. very we started kind of all in this sort of similar place where we're first kind of kickstarting our our like careers in like this on the most like baseline level and like going through sort of like doing the 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 less fun part which is like maybe like a bad basement show or whatever and then getting to move all move forward together and do something was so fun it's really amazing. And I think it comes through in the film that you all are working together in a, from a place of like 
uh, complete trust. Because uh, I mean, I think a lot of the times in this film in particular, you're out on a limb and like, you can see like, oh, the whole crew's here. We're all gonna, we're all gonna support each other. Um, but the second part of what I wanted to talk about is like, you blew up a car. And I also- You did. You did. You did. <laughs> Uh, I also, you know, sometimes I give out uh, random frame line awards that mean absolutely nothing and just, but I would love to give Bottoms the uh, unofficial frame line award for the best use of Total Eclipse of the Heart. <laughs> that was absolutely, absolutely brilliant. And like, yeah, it was a snort laugh when it all came together. That was beautiful. Um, I'd love to know about working with Charlie XCX. She's incredible. Um, when Rachel and I started writing this six years ago, like I just had, uh, we had separate playlists um, that would gas each other up. And I, my playlist was mostly Charlie. And Rachel and I both love Charlie and like have for years. And um, she's obviously a queer icon and, and, and just like an incredible musician. Um, uh, and uh, she was just, it was just all I listened to for so long. And then um, like fate happened and she, uh, saw Shiva and was a fan of it and then had Rachel on her podcast and they became friendly and she was like oh let me know if you'd want me to do a song or something and, and then I just asked Rachel to ask her through me to do the score um, and it, she miraculously said yes and um, she's so creative and, and like incredible and, and her she brought on two of her producers she works with all the time AG Cook and, and George Daniel um, and they just like literally I wish I was there but they like improvised in a studio for hours just like creating the sounds of the movie like and that's how they make their music like it's just a lot of Charlie was like I'm gonna need to use my voice as an instrument if I do this like it's not gonna sound like a typical score and that I was like that's great that's that's what we want um uh so she working her with was was working with her was wonderful I'm I mean Rach wasn't like deep in the in the weeds of it but like she put us together um I'm very very grateful for that and the score what I love so much about it is that like I feel like because Charlie like used her voice and she has such her own sound but she also was able to like she has such a big range where it's like it works so well and there's like there are sad moments in the movie and more dramatic or romantic, yeah. but then also the energy and the action. And I feel like use, using her voice as an instrument kind of like created a sound for the world that is really, I think is really cool because it's such a specific world and it's sort of like tying it all together in a cool way. Okay, we're gonna, we're hitting up on time, but I really have to ask, ask this question. Uh, it's for personal reasons. Uh, so this is my final one. I Marshawn Lynch. Uh, I know that he's really famous for like some sports ball stuff. I, I know he's from the Bay, uh, but I don't think a lot of people know that he is like absolute comedy gold. Um, how did he come to the film? Like, and were there any like moments that didn't make it because he just, I can't, I can't imagine being on set with some of the things that were coming out of his mouth. Uh, and like, I still am kind of like, where still giving side eye to Amelia Earhart. <laughs> um, so much is on the cutting room floor. Like, it's crazy. We tried to include, the, I think our first cut just like the, had that monologue where he's in the gym, like telling off Rachel and Io, like for like dis disappointing him and betraying him. Like, there was in our first cut it was like literally like a half an hour like filled with all the improv he was doing and then the studio was like we love Marshawn but what are you doing um he yeah. he he's so funny um I, I didn't know I'm I'm not a sports girl um I didn't know who he was um but uh he you know a lot of people know him for football and a lot of people obviously know him for being the personality that he is and being so honest and ridiculous in interviews and stuff um and he was on an episode of Murderville where he improvised the whole episode and our studio exec Alana sent it to us because she knew that we wanted someone really unexpected for that role of Mr. G um and then you know we yeah offered it to him and he was like why do you want me for this like I'm not an actor and we were like that's why um but yeah I mean Rach worked with him more closely like I feel like in, <laughs> he thought you had to play football uh Oh, yes, he taught me how to throw oh, a football. Literally, my dad and brother were so 
freaking jealous. Um, and then I also like the scene where he's talking to me in Iowa in the gym and he's like disappointed in us. We're like, anytime you see our backs, I'm like, that's shaking because we were like <laughs> cracking up and laughing. He just was like, so and it, and and like I knew he was gonna be funny, but literally it's like we're walking to set. He's like, I'm so nervous. Like I don't know. And then he rattles off like the 10 minute monologue that we were like better than the script. Cut all of this. this yeah. thing. it was so crazy. He kept being like, I want to get your lines right. Like and was so hung up on on getting it exactly word for word. Like you're an artist. You guys have craft. Like I want to match. Like, it. This. We were like, be fun. Just do you. And yeah, then he so would funny. be like, Marshawn, want to like talk about how you're disappointed in the girls? And he'd be like. I can try and then would like unleash like, like all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's wonderful and also just an incredibly kind um, and, and loving person. He'll call Rachel and I every like month or so anytime like there's news about the movie where he's like, I appreciate this opportunity. Like he continues to say that and he's just like a very lovely person as well. I love it. Murderville, that's the, is that the Will Arnett? Yeah, yeah, that was he was hilarious in that. That was kind of great. Um, well, oh, what is the tell us when um, when everybody in the audience tonight can actually go see this again and catch all the jokes that they just missed? Everyone can watch it August twenty fifth, in I believe it will be in San Francisco at that point. If not, then September first. It's it's in every city nationwide. So. Come watch it. I wish we could be there at the Castro right now. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm so glad this audience got to watch it. So thank you everyone <laughs> for attending. Well, thank you both. Congratulations again. It was this is a, the teen comedy that I certainly have been waiting for. So big congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.